back. I'm going to do a 606 swap into a sprinter. Uh, I'm going to make it mainly about the electrical side of things. That's what everybody needs to know. I'll keep it as much as I can to the point on electrical. Um, I just hope I answer more questions than I create. But if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I'm going to put in the comments section all the bits and pieces I ordered to make this work. And I hope it's helpful. Enjoy. Thank you. The main question everybody asks the electrics. How do I make the dash work? How do I make the engine start? How do I make the key work? It's actually fairly simple. As you know, OM606 will run on its own. Put it on the floor, give it fuel, give it 12 volts for the glow plugs and for the starter, it will start on the floor. Does not need an ECU. If you've put a throttle cable driven pump on uh, DPUK or diesel Nikon, this particular one's got a diesel Nikon on, so it does not need an ECU. The ECU for the van needs to stay, or car. I mean, this should cover any vehicle you're doing a swap in, really. The key is coded to the ECU, but it doesn't go any further. The ECU the vehicle stays we're going to use that to monitor the engine to get the vehicle to start this engine on the key all it really needs to see is a crank angle sensor so we take the crank angle sensor of the original engine happened to be a v6 in this same applies fitted it to this engine with a correct flywheel plugged it into this ecu using the original harness because that plug is the same plug and when you turn the ignition on it will automatically prime the fuel pump in the tank so we'll use that to feed the main pump and when you actually turn the key to crank it will turn the engine and it will make the fuel pump in the tank run as it would normally it doesn't know we've put another engine in here it's just looking for monitoring for sensors to give it information so First of all, crank angle sensor, that will make it run. That's all it needs. That will make the rev counter work. Also, I've given it the temperature sensor, the water temperature sensor. Again, using the ECU loom, it actually plugged straight onto the sensor that was in here. Uh, that's probably all you need to keep the dash happy, uh, apart from oil level on this particular one. This particular 2008 Sprinter, they didn't monitor oil pressure. And it's the same with a lot of Mercedes, which I find are really weird. But it does check the oil level, which is basically a tube-like sensor that sits in the bottom of the sump. Now you can get a sump that's correct with a sensor in it for a different model. I'll put a link in the description. Um, this one, we just want it to run. We just want the dash to be happy. So basically that tube, there's a hole in the bottom that the oil fills up in. I've glued that so it, the oil can't get out and I've filled it from the top. I've taped up the top. I've plugged it in to the harness using the original plug from the original harness from the original ECU and I've bolted it to the side of the block. So that will always be full of oil. So the dash will always register that it is full of oil. Now, as a precaution on the 606, you can put an old school oil pressure switch in. This sump will bolt straight to a 606. This is the oil level sensor in the original sump. And here it is bolted to the outside of the block. This is the oil pressure switch I've added and the old school lights to go in the dash. An old school oil pressure light on the dash just to keep you safe on that one um, i've also added an exhaust temperature sensor which was in the dbf or the catalyst or whatever so when you have live data on the computer through the odb plug which will still work 
it'll show catalyst temperature. But it was just basically for me messing around with fuel so I know what the exhaust temperature is. So that's all you need. You're going to use your original loom, your original ECU, and basically try and use any of the sensors you want to use, take them out of the engine that came out. So you're using the same plugs and make them fit in this engine. A lot of them are compatible in the 606. They either just plug in or the sensor itself will fit in. It's simplicity. Every other wire coming from that ECU now, you don't really need because we're not running a CDI. We're not monitoring any of the emissions <coughs> rubbish. So basically, as I show you, I've chopped all that out and it starts and it runs off the key. Obviously, because we've lost a load of sensors that the ECU is mon monitoring, the check engine light comes on. Now, there is a way around that, not a piece of tape. You can put a piece of tape over it if you want, but, but we want to know if there's a crank angle sensor problem, it will bring the light on, then we can find it in live in um, the OBD plug in your computer. So the, the, the four things I'm monitoring or however many things you want to monitor, you want them to put the check engine light on if there is a fault. Now to get rid of all the ones that are obviously faulty because they're not there, you need to find a decent mapper. They will take the map out, they will look at it, you tell them you just want to delete every fault code that is showing right now. They'll get rid of those lines of code. The dash engine management light should go out or should come on when you put the ignition on and then go out because it's only then monitoring the four things. Glow plugs. 606 needs a lot of heat to start. I tried to use the original glow plug harness and glow plug relay for the ECU, but it just wouldn't put them on long enough. CDI engine do not need the heat these do. So I got rid of that and basically I put the control unit in out of an earlier model and I've put a separate light next to the light, old school, on the dash. So you've got glow plug light, oil light on the dash, just like an old school vehicle. This is the glow plug module out of an early 606 TD. Um, I had to <laughs> make up the terminals to fit. I'll put a link in the description of where to get that. And there's the wire and diagram. For this glow plug module, a separate temperature sensor is required. Um, luckily, there is a port in the head just to screw into it. The old engine, uh, as I took the harness off, I've labelled every single sensor so I know what I want to keep, what I get, want to get rid of. Uh, here, I'm basically just going to cut out everything that I don't need. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can just tape them up to one side. I was just trying to make a, a really tidy harness. I nearly forgot to say, you must leave the starter energizer wire in. It's a heavy purple wire. You can't miss it. Do not cut it out. It goes from the ECU to the starter energizer. And obviously you need that to start it. Also leave the alternator wire in. Uh, it's blue with a red trace. And there's the harness finished. This is the clutch and dual mass flywheel I've used. I'll put a link in the description. This is the flywheel sensor out of the original engine. You kind of need to measure the depth of where it's going in so it doesn't hit the pickup teeth on the back of the flywheel. Sometimes you need to space them off a touch. Also, you need to trim the back of the sensor where it meets the gearbox, where it bolts down from the top. 
because they protrude slightly and the gearbox will squash it and destroy it. I've used an early throttle pedal so I can run a cable, but leave the old electronic fly-by wire pedal plugged in and bolt it under the dash. This way the ABS still works. Someone is going to get a shock when they see that down the line. Just to recap, we need the starter solenoid wire, which is purple, the alternator wire, which is blue and red. You run a heavy cable from the battery, link it to the starter and the alternator. Sensors required, crank angle, water temperature and oil level. turn the engine off you have to give the pump vacuum we've taken the vacuum from the servo and put it through a small solenoid switch I think they're called an N47 switch uh, I've taken an ignition live from a headlamp it's the only place you can get an ignition live from in the engine bay so when you turn the ignition on the valve is closed vacuum can't get to the pump and when you turn the ignition off the vacuum switch is open gives vacuum to the solenoid on the pump to turn the fuel off if you don't wire this in, in, in independently the engine will not stop okay now we've got our oil pressure switch, our glow plug light. Uh, couldn't get a yellow one, so a green one will do. Put the ignition on. All the warning lights come on as they should. These ones will go out in a second. Or ABS and such like. Start the engine. And you check engine light goes out. The only one that won't go out is the glow plug light, so I'll probably delete that in LED. Or we could use the original plug relay and run it in piggyback and then that light would work no problem. I mean, we've got a brake pad one light on, that's irrelevant. The SRS, which is the seatbelt light. But we don't have a passenger seat in, so the, the seatbelt isn't plugged in, that's why we've got that one. And that's about it. The ECU is our friend. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of all this. If you label everything, it's fairly simple. I've taken some notes to summarize, so I'm not rambling on as normal and try and keep this to the point and keep it simple. Putting the 606 into this Sprinter, or pretty much any vehicle for that matter, you want the dash to work. Use the vehicle's ECU and use the vehicle, the engine that came out, loom that plugs into the ECU. Give the ECU what it wants to see. In this instance, the crank angle sensor, the coolant temperature sensor, the oil level and or oil pressure, depending on which engine. Uh, give it the main live to the engine from the battery. So the main live, the heavy, heavy wire goes from the battery to the starter to the alternator. And don't forget to put in heavy earth from the chassis to the engine. What's next? The wire that goes to the alternator and the wire that goes to the starter, solenoid. And it'll all work off the key. Basically you can give it any other sensor that you want to see in live data through your OBD port. Um, on this sprinter, I've wired the glow plugs in on a standalone loom and relay. To get the glow plug light out, I guess we could piggyback the one that the ECU would see and that would make the light work normally, or just delete the LED that's in the dash. And that'll sort out because we do have a separate glow plug light on this particular one. Uh, and to stop the engine, you need a standalone vacuum switch, as I explained previously.
leave the fly-by-wire accelerator pedal plugged in, hide it up the dash, that way the ABS lights all go out and the ABS works as normal. Still brings a lot of fault codes up, but it doesn't seem to bother it. Um, and then just basically map out everything, every fault code that comes up for the stuff that you're not using and the, and the check engine light will work as normal. I've driven this all day. It's worked flawlessly, dash works perfectly, rev counter, whatever worn lights, all good. A great resource is a Facebook page called Sprinter OM 606 Conversions. There's a lot of very knowledgeable people on there. Uh, they'll answer your questions, they've answered my questions. Um, share the knowledge, that's how this thing works. And that's about it um, for the algorithm. Please subscribe, give me a like, drop something in the comments. I hope I've answered more questions than I've raised. No doubt there'll be questions. Pop them in, I'll do my best to answer them. And that's it. Thank you for watching.